very different method than what I've been doing. Um, it's not like factoring trinomials, but it is, in my, in my uh, opinion, easier. So factoring the difference of squares, what does that mean? Well, it's going to have two terms in it. That's why it's kind of different than what we've been doing. Um, instead of three terms. Uh, just, just the title for now. Um, it is important to remember your, your squares, okay? We've, we've dealt with that before when we were uh, simplifying radicals. So we got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Next one would be 36, 49. Uh, 8 times 8, 64. So you get the point, right? Um, another thing to note is exponents, okay? In order for this to work out, the exponent, evenly at least, the exponent needs to be even, okay? Because when you cut an exponent in half and it's even, it remains, you get a, you get a um, whole number back, right? The exponent's odd, like x cubed, and you cut that in half, that's 1.5, right? So we're looking for even exponents and we're looking for numbers like this. And look at the word difference. So we're also looking for a subtraction sign. Uh, students always ask me, can you factor the sum of squares? And the answer is you cannot. So everything on your worksheet should have a minus sign on it. All right, so you do need to write this down, a squared minus b squared. That's kind of the form these problems are going to take on. All right, so uh, let's do the first example. We have 4x squared minus 9y to the fourth. It's actually kind of similar to that first example in the worksheet. Um, so, so here's how you know if you can factor using the difference of squares, and it comes out even. Notice the coefficients are perfect squares, 4 and 9. Notice my exponents, too. They're both even. Now, you can factor stuff when it's not that way. but And we might do one like that, but everything on the assignment certainly will work out evenly. Um, that leads us to step zero, your favorite step. Okay, you can call it step one if you want. Make sure before you use the difference of squares, look to see if it has a GCF. Now, this one doesn't. You know, there's, there's no number to pull out, and these are two different variables, but just always check to make sure we'll do an example like that together where you do need to pull out a GCF first. The next step, step whatever you want to call it, step two, whatever, take the square root of the first expression, meaning the first term here, okay? And that will give you your A. All right, this is very straightforward basically if you're figuring out a and b and you're going to plug it into a formula pretty simple you're going to plug it into this formula actually and it'll it'll pretty much factor it for you um so my first term is 4x squared okay i'm going to take the square root of that okay and remember you can distribute a square root to both terms inside so what's the square root of four 2, and what's the square root of x squared? Good, so your a is equal to 2x. So again, I'll reiterate, to figure out a, which you take the square root of your first term, and that will give you a. It's real easy. How do you guys think you're going to find b? Take the square root of the second term. Uh, well, first of all, you don't include the minus, okay? The term itself is after the minus sign, so you're only taking the square root of 9y to the 4th. So it'd be 3 what? 3y squared, right? Because the square root of y to the 4th is y squared. So your second step is to take the square root of the second term, and you get your b, okay? Now here's the actual formula. I need to erase the bottom part. That's going to confuse you guys. Um, your formula for difference of squares, and if you say it enough, you can remember it, a plus b, a minus b. Pretty simple, right? In fact, you can do the reverse. You can do a minus b, a plus b. But the next step, once you figure out a and b, is to write your formula out. So your formula for the difference of squares, a squared minus b squared, is a plus b, a minus b. I guess that's the reason I wrote it out, to show that it actually works out. Because if you if you were to multiply the these parentheses back out, you're gonna you're gonna get a squared minus b squared. I guess I will show you guys. All right, so 
what would happen if you multiplied these parentheses? You get a squared for your first, right? Then you'd get minus ab for your second. Then you'd get plus ab for your i and foil. Then you'd get minus b squared for your fourth. And notice what happens there. Those two terms in the middle cancel and you end up with a squared minus b squared, which is exactly what you started with. Okay, so that's, that's where the factorization comes from. So your fourth step is pretty obvious. Once you write the formula out, you can just plug in what you figured out for a, a and b. So we got 2x for a, we got 3y squared for b, and we can just plug that stuff in. So wherever there's an a, I'm plugging in 2x. And wherever there's a b, I'm plugging in 3y squared, and that finishes the problem. Once you plug it in, yeah, when you're done, you should have two sets of parentheses, and that's the factorization. So you're taking the square root of the first, uh, sorry, you're pulling on a GCF first, then you're taking the square root of the first term, square root of the second, writing the formula out, and plugging it in. You don't need to use the x or anything like that. So that's why I think it's actually easier. All right, let's look at, um, you don't have to do this step, okay? You don't even have to write it down, but you can check your work. If you were to multiply this out, the answer that we got right here, if you multiplied it out, you should end up with the original problem. But as long as you just check your steps, you should be fine. Okay, but what I did was I re-multiplied the answer out and got what we started with, 4x squared minus 9y to the fourth. But let's do... Let's, Step four, yes. It says plug the values for a and b into the factors. So basically plug in a and b. Example two, 18m squared minus 32. So the first thing you should do is to look for what? Okay, does it have one? Yes. What number goes into 18 and 32? Uh, is it six? No, it's not. No. Nope. Three is. <laughs> Two. Yeah. Dang it. it does seem like it would be bigger. I understand. It seems like you could pull something bigger out, but you can't. So it's going to be 2. 9, 9m squared minus 16. Now you guys seen what see what happens when you pull the 2 out? Now we do have perfect squares. Okay? Now we do have a 9 and a 16. We can definitely use the difference of squares. That 2 is just going to kind of follow along the problem, it won't really affect, you know, our A and B and stuff like that. Just make sure you include it with the final answer. Okay, so um, your A, right, is just the square root of the first term. Okay, so A is going to be equal to what? Square root of 9M squared is the same as what? 3M. Okay. And your b is the square root of the second term. Again, you do not include the minus sign. <laughs> you don't include the minus sign, just the number after the minus sign or the term, which is 4. Then you're going to write out the formula for difference of squares, which is a minus b, a plus b. Wait, does it matter which way you write it out? Doesn't matter. The plus or the minus can come either way. And then you're just going to simply plug in what you figured out for A and B. So for A, I'm plugging in 3M. And yes, it's always going to be minus and plus. And again, it doesn't matter which order. And then for B, I'm plugging in 4. So my first is 3M plus 4. Second, I have, sorry, first is 3M minus 4. Second is 3M plus 4. And that's it. I'm going to do one more example with two variables. Yes, I did not follow my own uh, directions. The two needs to carry down. There should be a two on the outside. When you pull it out, like I said, it doesn't affect the problem as far as the, the difference of squares, but it should be included in your final answer. All right, so this one involves fractions and it involves two variables. Looks pretty tough, right? Same steps, though. 
Um, okay. So first of all, you would look to see if you can pull out a GCF. Not really, right? I mean, there, there are two fractions. There's a 9 up here, a 4, and a 16. You might go pull out a 1 fourth, but it's going to end up being pretty messy if we do it that way. I'm just going to leave it this way. But you can go ahead and figure out your A by taking the square root of the first term. So you have the square root of 1 fourth x squared y to the fourth. Um, square root of 1 fourth, well, you can take the square root of 1, which is 1, which gives you the top of the fraction. Square root of 4 is 2, so that's your number or your coefficient. Then you have the square root of x squared, which is just x. Then you have the square root of y to the fourth, which is y squared. So that's your a term. Now to the b term. Again, you don't include the minus, just the term after the minus. Square root of 9 over 16. Again, you can take the square root of the top, which gives you 3. The square root of the bottom, which gives you 4, so it's 3 fourths for the coefficient. Square root of b to the 6 is b cubed. Square root of c to the 6 is c cubed. Okay, so you're basically just taking, you're taking half of the exponent. Because remember, a square root is the same as the one-half power. So it would basically be b to the 6 to the one-half. 6 times one-half is 3. So the shortcut, though, is if you're taking the square root of an exponential term, just cut the uh, exponent in half, which is why it needs to be even, right? If this was a 7 and I cut it in half, at 3.5 back. I mean, I guess it would work. It just wouldn't look right. So we got b is equal to 3 fourths b cubed c cubed. Then we write out the formula, a plus b, a minus b. And then we just plug in a and b, and that's it. We get 1 half xy squared plus 3 fourths b cubed c cubed, 1 half xy squared minus 3 fourths b cubed c cubed. And again, this is much harder than anything you'll see on the worksheet, but like you said, it's not really hard. It just involves more uh, terms and expressions. So any other questions on that? Should be able to finish this this period, I would think.